Greetings, lords and ladies. Uh, this video is, uh, don't know how long it's going to be, but I want to outline some philosophical principles and refute some other so-called philosophical principles by others. And it, I might need to split this video. We'll see. Regardless, there is no doubt an incredible amount of hostility towards men going their own way. I mean, this is... Uh, well documented and there's a reason for this and the title of the video as you can see is rational self-interest versus reproductive interest now they're not necessarily the same thing in fact people conflate them all the time and it's very interesting because for a man rational self-interest is not synonymous with reproductive interest his reproductive interest same token. Uh, rational self-interest for a woman, not always, but very often, is synonymous with her reproductive interest. I mean, the fact that we have this phrase, women and children first, is a testament to that. They're seen as synonymous, as sort of uh, one and the same, more or less. And this, uh, this leads us or to divergent paths. That means that women oftentimes can pursue uh, their self-interest with it coinciding along with uh, sort of coinciding self-interest with their reproductive interest. Uh, and men have to make a fine delineation, a distinction between their reproductive interest and their self-interest. Now, of course, you could spin it any way you want. You can say, well, it's just a matter of interpretation, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, there's some truth to that. But, but at the end of the day, uh, it's very important to note that MGTOW, we, we as men just decide to do our own thing on our own terms, in our own interest, and, and that's it. Uh, many of us, most of us, are either not interested in reproduction or just don't see it as a viable option in today's climate and so we say fuck it and we just do what we want to do and that's a big problem that that is rational self-interest as opposed to reproductive interest now what happens when men uh, in any day and age in the past now decide to put a priority on reproductive interest well they have to make lots of sacrifices. They're, it costs them their health very often, and sometimes it can cost them their lives. Now, <clears throat> add that to the uh, the political stew that we find ourselves in, and of course, uh, it's even more precarious. So, uh, they're not one and the same. But you see, people have always had a problem with men expressing rational self-interest, and the reason is simple. Men are the creative force of humanity. Our, our analytical skills, collectively speaking, of course there are always deviations and departures from this, are unrivaled. Women, generally speaking, don't come close to it. Uh, we, men speaking, generally speaking, we have built civilization and thus, and that, that of course was in large measure based on reproductive drive, no doubt. The desire to serve the female. However, for the first time ever, in at least modern times, men are coming together and expressing rational self-interest and that is something that people cannot countenance women in general cannot countenance uh, feminists can't, can't countenance and, uh, and tra tra traditional conservatives can't either because they're still stuck in the re reproductive slave modus operandi and it's very interesting uh, because when women express self-interest, which very often, though not always, coincides with the reproductive interest, women and children first, I mean, it's a synonymous term, uh, they're not faulted for it. But it's only because there's such a distinction between men living for themselves on their own terms uh, and men living for everyone else. I mean, men, basically, generally speaking, are expected to live for everyone else, expected to contribute to the general wheel, the common wheel. Uh, and they're expected certainly to live for women, uh, certainly to, in the case of reproduction, uh, live for their children and for society at large, en masse. 
Um, when men choose not to do that, they're threatening. Now, the distinction, of course, here to be made between uh, this and, say, bachelorhood is that this is a very conscious thing. This is a conscious uh, movement, if you want to call it such. I'm not a fan of the word movement. Um, and it's happening in ever larger numbers. You know, the odd bachelor who just keeps his mouth shut and lives his life, they don't mind him. But the people who have problems with with us, with pe men going their own way, doing things on their own terms, uh, our society in general, uh, women in general, declared feminists, and of course traditional conservatives. Uh, and this is a very interesting phenomenon, I think. A lot of this hostility we see direct to us is is in large measure coming from traditional conservatives. And this is, of course, due to the fact that traditional conservatives are essentially conformists. Um, not only are they conformists, most of them are, are hypocrites. And I'm going to spend uh, the rest of this video talking about uh, some particular hypocrisy we find in the traditional conservative uh, circles. But let's make, let's make this uh, clear one more time. Rational self-interest, as opposed to reproductive interest, is distinguishable in men, and far less so in women. And thus, when men decide to go their own way, they stick out like a sore thumb, and people don't like it because it means we're not we're not serving the collective. Uh, the collective we're not serving the general wheel, and we're not serving women above all. Now, moving on. Uh, as everyone knows, uh, blocking mystery has reached. Uh, the point of, I guess, insanity. I, I think he's mentally ill on some level, uh, or suffers from some sort of narcissistic or megalomaniac, megalomaniacal personality disorder. I don't know, um, but, uh, and and so I don't see addressing him as an individual uh, as worthwhile. But there are some points, terrible points, right there, either that he makes that could be addressed. For one thing. The positions he offers are, for all his talk of being a libertarian and a, a someone who co who fights for liberty, are fascistic. I mean, he, he is a fascist. I, I mean, I can only base it on what he says in his videos. Maybe he's different in real life. I have no idea. It doesn't interest me. So, based on the material he's offered to us in his videos, he sounds like a, a fascist. He sounds just as much as a fascist as any feminist would. Why do I say this? Well, he thinks that uh, he's made statements such as, and I'm paraphrasing here, that only couples who can naturally reproduce should be allowed to do so. Now, so for couples having fertility problems, they should they they have to adopt. According to him, they are not allowed to, to make use of uh, in vitro fertilization or other uh, biomedical technologies that are emerging. Nope, they're not allowed to do that. Um, and one thing, and moreover, uh, so this is a, a dictate, you know, you cannot do this. And I'll get to the reasons why he says this. The other thing is, whether you agree with gay people or not, um, he also says that gay people should have no interaction whatsoever with children. None. Now, maybe you agree with him, maybe you don't. I am uh, neutral on this subject, which of course extends to gay adoption, you know, gay people adopting children. No, 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 no. This is also a dictate. Now, if you were a libertarian as opposed to a fascist, he would his attitude would be akin to well most of ours, and this is my attitude. My life is my life. It's only my business. I don't have any order, uh, any authority to tell others what to do. I don't have any authority to tell others what to think or feel. Uh, I may not always agree with them. But it doesn't give me the right or authority to tell them what to do. Uh, he might be bothered that gay people are adopting children, and he might be bothered that couples with fertility problems are making use of an in vitro fertilization. But he has no his he has it's not his business. His business is his own life and his children's life up until they become adults when they cease to be minors, and that's it. He has no business in telling anyone else what to do with their lives. And of course, he does. And he claims to be a libertarian. But this, of course, is the hallmark of a fascist. Uh, he is a 
a fascist. Uh, he tells, he tells, he says, he doesn't say, it's none of my business, do what you want. I don't agree with it, but do what you want. He says, this is the way it is, and because I say it, you, it, it, it is thus. Now, he grounds the, uh, he, his grounding, and um, he backs this up with the claim that this is all based on natural law, i.e. natural rights. He, he makes these fa incredibly fallacious claims about uh, natural human rights being derivative from nature, from natural law. Literally that, uh, for example, the consensus that we have that you shouldn't you shouldn't uh, engage in theft can somehow be linked to the laws of nature. For example, the laws of thermodynamics. It's it's absurd. It's absurd. Uh, and it, he does this. I imagine. I mean, he might be mentally ill. We don't know. It seems to be on some level he might be. But um, it seems to be if he in his own mind that he believes that the that it sounds cool. It sounds cool to say human rights, natural natural rights, and he doesn't you like that term, natural rights are derivative from of, of nature. Uh, but in nature, um, we find mostly red tooth and claw. Now, that's not to say that we don't have certain evolutionary proclivities to expressing moral, uh, what we would call a, a morality or a kind of moral behavior. I mean, altruistic, uh, reciprocal altruism is in fact a viable mechanism that has a lot of evidence going for it, but that is not a complete um, moral system, and nor is it a, a complete system of justice. Um, this, these are sort of urges that we have, and they're highly inconsistent as, as well. M more or less, by and large, the system that we have uh, in nature is one of red tooth and claw, kill or be killed. Uh, so this idea that laws and natural rights, as he puts it, are somehow derivative of nature itself. Uh, it's absurd. More to the point, there, there are plenty of species uh, in nature where you have identifiably homosexual animals partaking in child rearing, or at least helping out with the, with the process of child rearing. So, you know, if you really want to just go by nature, then uh, you're kind of off there. It's um. It's, it's absurd, to say the least. Now, I'm going to continue with this, but as you know, because of the silly copyright infringement I have on my channel, I have to split this up, so this will be part one, and I will see you in a little